As horrible as it sounds, car companies are making cars harder to work on, literally forcing you to pay them to do it. Most cases, you can't even do basic routine maintenance. You can't even rotate your tires if you have TPMS sensors. It's 100% extortion, but it's also 100% avoidable if you have the same tools as the stupid idiot dealerships. All plugged in and the main unit powered on by simply pressing the blue button for two seconds, you can now start communication with your vehicle. So the vehicle that we're going to be communicating with is my 2005 Chevy Colorado. It has an ABS fault and the first thing that we're going to want to do in any situation when you're diagnosing something is run codes. So in order to do this on the screen you're going to see TPMS, ODB2, and then you're going to see maintenance down underneath TPMS. So we're just going to go ahead and go to maintenance. You can also go to the ODB2, which we will go to in a minute when we bring up live data. You can also bring up live data on the diagnostic side, but it's not as extensive. So now to do this, you have to enter your VIN. Now there are a couple ways you can do this. It will either automatically scan your vehicle and figure it out. This takes a little bit longer, but there's also a built-in camera on the back of the device, which actually allows you to scan your VIN. I would suggest getting it from uh, in the door jam as opposed to going on you know, the main plate that's like through the uh, windshield. And now, as soon as we're connected, we can go ahead and we can read our codes. And in this case, it looks like we have two codes for, which I very much thought this was going to be, for each of our front wheel speed sensors. Now, it doesn't really say anything. It doesn't say intermittent uh, reading or anything like that. It just says problems with the circuit. So that kind of tells me that they're not reading at all. And so now to figure this out, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is go to the ODB2 section and then go through, you do have to reconnect uh, your car again, but then we're gonna wanna go to live data, uh, actually bring up ABS live data. And what we're gonna look for is we're gonna get the front left wheel speed sensor and the front right wheel speed sensor. Uh, it'll come up as wheel speed. And we're gonna go ahead and throw the rear wheel speed on uh, the scanner just for to show kind of what's going on. So as you can see, we have absolutely no input from either our left wheel speed sensor or our right wheel speed sensor. Now, this truck has sat for probably about a year. And now what I'm thinking it is, is it's probably basically the easiest way to put it is there's what is called a little tone ring or basically a ring that sends a signal to a sensor that sends it back to the computer that tells your car how fast you are driving. Um, now these rings get corroded and it's mag it all works off of magnetics so the more corrosion and rust it gets on it the less uh, you know it's going to receive that signal or be able to send that signal. So what I would definitely imagine in this point, because we're not going to actually go too far into diagnosing this, but um, we're, I'm going to guess that those rings have to be cleaned off along with the uh, sensors themselves are going to have to be cleaned off. Now you can go a little bit further from here. You can check out the specifications of your actual wheel speed sensors and you can then use a voltmeter or an ohm meter to ohm out and figure out what the ohms are of the sensor. The sensors do go bad. Uh, from there, you can also check for any cuts or nicks in the wires going up to the connector and also at the connector where the wheel speed sensor connects into. Okay, so going out to actually get B-roll that I realized that I had missed, um, I actually noticed that these are a little bit different. They don't have uh, the ring with the, uh, it's a different design. And on this truck, um, like I said, since it sat for so long, uh, it's going to just need new wheel bearings, which uh, usually the wheel speed sensor will come with new wheel bearings, uh, but you can also just change the wheel speed sensor. I did try cleaning them out and spinning the tires, and it really didn't work at all. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. That is another thing to remember. Uh, you, all you have to do is bring up live data on the diagnostic part, not the ODB2 part. I think I messed that up earlier in the video, but if you go to diagnostics, uh, under the TPMS sensor on the left, I think it's like the second or third one down, you hit it and then that gives you all of, you know, the most extensive of the live data. You can just read so many sensors off of that. It tells you so much. Again, that's really not something that we're gonna go too far into in this video. And we're also not gonna go too far into the TPMS sensor part because we're actually gonna do a whole entire video on that so that one's going to be really fun and we're going to go pretty far into it i'm going to show you that you can actually change and fix anything with your tpms sensor including changing your tpms sensors all by yourself and you don't have to take it to a shop but if you've made it this far please consider liking and subscribing and also 
definitely stick around because uh, I've done a lot to the Roadmaster as far as our Project Land Yacht. Uh, episode 2 is coming out on that and i am got crazy stuff coming for it. I've already did something crazy to it that differentiates it from any other Roadmaster that I've ever seen and uh, I think you're really going to like it. But in the meantime, there will be videos and playlists up there that you can check out if you like what you have saw and if you want to see more of it. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Thank you.